In this video, we're going to talk about how to evaluate definite integrals. Now, before we begin, take a minute to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. So let's talk about the difference between a definite integral and an indefinite integral. A definite integral has a lower limit of integration, in this case, a and b, the upper limit of integration. An indefinite integral does not have that. So this is an indefinite integral, and this here is a definite integral. The antiderivative of a function f of x is capital F. To evaluate the definite integral, once you find the antiderivative, you need to plug in the limits of integration. And so the, the value of the definite integral is going to be f of b minus f of a. But let me show you the process by which we can evaluate a definite integral. So let's start with this example. We need to find the antiderivative of each term in this expression. What is the antiderivative of 8x cubed? Well, let me give you a review first. The antiderivative of a variable raised to a constant is going to equal that variable raised to the constant plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Now, for indefinite integrals, we would have the constant of integration c. But when dealing with definite integrals, you don't need to worry about c. So as an example, let's say if we want to find the antiderivative of x to the fifth, all you need to do is add 1 to the exponent. It's going to be x to the sixth, and then divide by that result. So let's say if we want to determine the antiderivative of 4x to the seventh. So we have a constant times x to the seventh. First, rewrite the constant, and then find the antiderivative of x to the seventh. So add 1 to 7, that's 8, and then divide by that number. And after that, you can reduce it. So 8 is 4 times 2. We can cancel the 4, and so the answer is going to be x to the 8 over 2. So that's how you could find the antiderivative of monomials. Now let's continue on with this example. So to find the antiderivative of 8x cubed, first we're going to rewrite the constant 8, then we're going to add 1 to the exponent, 3 plus 1 is 4, and then we're going to divide by 4. Now let's repeat this process for the next one. So the antiderivative of 3x squared is going to be the constant 3 times x raised to the third power divided by 3. Now what about the antiderivative of 6 times x? If you don't see a number, it's always a 1. This is 6 times x to the first power. So just like before, we're going to rewrite the constant 6, and then the variable, add 1 to the exponent, 1 plus 1 is 2, and then divide by that result. Now, as was mentioned before, because we're dealing with a definite integral, we don't need to write the constant c here. But we do need to write our limits of integration. So now let's simplify this expression. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So we have 2 times x to the fourth. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So that cancels. So we have 1x cubed, which we can write as just x cubed. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So then this is going to be plus 3x squared, evaluated from 2 to 3. Now, this is going to equal f of 3 minus f of 2. And keep in mind, this expression here represents lowercase f of x. And this expression is the antiderivative, which represents capital F of X. So we're going to plug in 3 and 2 into capital F of X. So in, this, in these brackets, we're going to put F of 3. And here, this is going to be F of 2. So let's plug in 3 into this expression. So it's going to be 2 times 3 raised to the 4th power plus 3 raised to the third power, plus 3 times 3 squared. Now, let's substitute x with 2 in the second 
set of brackets. So we have 2 times 2 to the 4th power plus 2 to the 3rd plus 3 times 2 squared. So this is f of 3, and this here is f of 2. So at this point, we just need to do the math. 3 to the 4th power is 81, and 81 times 2 is 162. 3 to the 3rd is 27. 3 squared is 9 times 3, that's 27 as well. 2 to the 4th power. If you multiply 4 twos, you're going to get 16. And 16 times 2 is 32. 2 to the 3rd power is 8. 2 squared is 4 times 3, that's 12. Twenty-seven plus twenty-seven. We no longer need the brackets anymore. Twenty-seven plus twenty-seven is fifty-four. Thirty-two plus eight is forty. And forty plus twelve is fifty-two. So this is minus fifty-two. Fifty-four minus fifty-two is two. One sixty-two plus two is one sixty-four. So this is the value of the definite integral. Now this value here, 164, represents the area under the curve that is between the curve represented by that function and the x-axis between the x values 2 and 3. So that's what the definite integral can do. It can help you calculate the area under the curve. But that's the topic for another discussion. For those of you who want more examples on evaluating definite integrals, check out the description section of this video. I'm going to post some links there if you wish to find more examples, even harder examples, including square roots and other stuff. So feel free to take a look at that. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on that notification bell. Thanks again for watching.